a discovery which uh, shows some um, raises some questions. And, and, um, I want to show you what I found and uh, hopefully be open to problem to explain conceptually what what the numerology I'm going to show actually means. And the initial part of this, uh, what I will describe, the first half of the talk will be will be motivation that leads to the study of the splitting measures and so on. And then the second half will concern itself with the properties of the splitting polynomials, which depend on a parameter, and that, that parameter can be set equal to one, and then you get the numerology that I would like to show. Mm -hmm. so the first part of this talk is um, <coughs> is uh, joint work with, uh, with my PhD student, Ben Weiss. And he, he finished three years ago. This is Benjamin L. Weiss, not the same as Benji <laughs> Weiss. In, 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 in Jerusalem. <laughs> okay, and I would, and um, I, I asked him a problem which was about what what is the analog of um, of um, splitting of polynomials when you do things over the p-adic. So let me start with. Let me start with Van der Waarden's theorem. This is an outgrowth of the Hilbert irreducibility theorem. So in this talk, I'm going to be dealing with a monax degree and polynomial. And let's first of all say what if if you if you view the coefficients over C over over C as independent <coughs> transcendentals, then what do you get? So if I write f of x as a x minus theta i, I can take I can take this function field of indeterminate and I can adjoin all the roots. And then this will be a Galois extension. Root Galois group X root symmetric group on Okay, so the Hilbert irreducibility theorem says we can, it was done in much more generality, but it would say the Hilbert irreducibility theorem says that if we, we can specialize the coefficients ai to be in q or ai in z, so the polynomial remains irreducible. remains irreducible over Q. And we can also do this in such a way as to, as to preserve the Galois structure and so Van, Van der Waard proved a quantitative form of this. Um, I'm not sure I have the exact So let's consider a a zero a one in a box with all the a i in integers in a box with all the a i less than or equal to b. So there are two b plus one to the n such polynomials. He didn't state it this way, but I will say it. Then then with probability one. As B goes to infinity, a random polynomial in the box is irreducible with Galois group, with 
Galois group, the full symmetric group estimate of length. Hmm? So that means, quantitatively, it means the error as you go to the exceptional set is little o of b to the n as n goes to infinity. Thank you. I've made many more mistakes. Um, okay. There's, let me say there's a refinement. There's a Gallagher, re Gallagher gave a refinement in early 1970s. It used the large sieve. It said the exceptional set is of size big O of B n minus one half little g. It was it's down by a square root of B from the main term. And you couldn't do better than big O of B minus one because splitting off a linear factor will give you an error, will already account for an error term of B, B minus one. Okay, so here's a question. Here's the question. What what happens what happens to Van der Waarden's theorem over the Pietic? Okay. The the answer has to be totally different. Yes? These are integers. In, integers in the box. So that means minus b, minus b minus 1 up to b, right? So there are 2b plus 1 to the n with such polynomials. Hmm? Ah, uh, this is the number theory big O notation. Okay, the O depends on N. The constant in the O symbol depends on N. I'm fix fix is it for now N N N will be will be fixed. Okay. Okay, well you can do the same thing. You can you can let F of X be X to the N plus A to the N minus one. Now we take the take the coefficients in Z P to the X to the A R. So now a, a0, a n minus 1 are sitting in z p to the n. So this is good. This is a compact space, has measure 1. It's a Haar measure. What, what happens to this thing when you draw random coefficients from the p-adic integers? I mean, I don't know why this question hadn't really been studied before, because it has a, it has a, well, first of all, let me say, Galois groups over the p over the over the p-adic, they are solvable. So the answer can't possibly be the same as in the, as in the general case because it, that answer was a symmetric group which is not solvable for n bigger than 5. Okay. And furthermore, um, the distribution, the distribution will with a positive probability be um, it will have the splitting field being Z, being QP itself. It won't give you any extension at all with positive probability because of the of the Hensel lemma. You get little p-adic disks in which the uh, Galois extension remains constant. And so, if you certainly have cases where it's reducible, and then it remains reducible over a little open disk. Okay, but it turns out it has it has a nice answer if. Yeah, this is a, the Galois group of e every p-adic extension is a solvable Galois group. Okay, and, and furthermore, if it's chainly ramified, it has a very restricted form. Uh, it's um, two, two, two steps. It has a nice answer if you put on the restriction, if you put on the restrictions that, that P does not divide the discriminant of F which is equivalent to, if, 
It has a nice answer if you put on the restriction and, and this, this result is in a paper of a Benz in 2013 in the journal Number Theory. This has a cute answer, which is, if we restrict, if you put on the restriction that P does not divide the discriminant of F, and let me say on the space that has the following property. So here's ZP, here's ZP to the N. P, P divides the discriminant of F has exactly volume 1 over P. So the set where, you're, where it's nice has, has volume exactly 1 minus 1 over P. And the bad case where P divides the discriminant of F. So this, this, imposes, this, this imposes a condition that the extension is unramified. And in this case, the answer is, The Galois group of the splitting field of F over QP is cyclic with probability 1. But it's, it's not cyclic of a fixed order. And the, the distribution of the order of the cyclic group is, is given by the following recipe. Well, okay, it's not exact. The, the recipe, I will get to the punchline, right? It's cyclic with order one, and here's the recipe. If you, you pick G out of the symmetric group with the uniform distribution, that's the Kebetarov part. And then you draw as your statistic the order of G. Okay, that's a random distribution. You pick a random element of the symmetric group and the order of the cyclic group gives you exactly the correct probabilities for the different orders of the cyclic groups that you get here. And why is that? Because the punchline is that it's all inherited from a finite field. This, you can reduce this thing modulo p, you get a finite field, you get an unramified p at extension. It's simply, it's simply, it's parallel to the the extension of the finite fields, which are all cyclic extensions of various sizes, and this gives the correct probability distribution. Okay, that's the first part. That was the first motivation, which was to, so this give, this is the core, the parallel for Hilbert irreducibility. If you restrict, if you put on this condition of excluding 1 minus 1 over p, which goes to 0 as p goes to infinity, then on the remaining part, you have a, Exactly sharp distribution. Now I come to the stuff that is in the in the paper on the archive there. This so this is motivated by some. This is motivated by some work of Bargava, which appeared in IMRN in 2007. It's called Mass Formula for Extension. And, and Bar Bargava did the following thing. He said, so first we have a definition. We will define an SN number field is a So this is non-Galois for n bigger than a to the 3, extension f, f over q with degree n, with degree n whose Galois closure, whose Galois closure kf, k over q is, has Galois group SN. So our picture is we have Q and we have F and we have K and this, this extension, this SN, this extension here is degree N. And when you have this arrangement, then you're going to in fact have, you're going to have a series of conjugate fields. 
So only for n equals 2 is this extension abelian or otherwise non-abelian. Okay? The relation of this to the so let's so let's look in the Van der Waarden case. If you if you took f to be q of theta, you would join one root one one root of one of these polynomials whose splitting field is Sn, and then you're just going to get an Sn number field in this extension. So this this will be Q of theta 1, and this will be Q of adjoining all the theta. So there's a parallel. And what Bargava asked about is, as you know, much of his great work for which he won the Fields Medal has this information that gives information about the um, just <coughs> Well, he's, he's extended the geometry of numbers in various directions, and he used those to, um, to in particular, to count fields of low degree up to degree 5. So he, so let's, let's consider all the SN extensions of discriminant, having discriminant less than or equal to some bound B. And that this paper on mass formulas, by the way, had many different conjectures. And I'm only extracting the particular conjectures that are relevant here. So we consider all extensions of discriminant less than or equal to, to B. There, so we fix down, we take all the extensions of, with discriminant less than B. And we ask how, we ask how a specific prime, specific prime, P splits in F. So unlike the unlike the Galois case, that it can split into various pieces of of different degrees. There's and let us condition on the on the field F being not ramified, not ramified at P. Yes, P is fixed. So what? One fixed prime. And so here are his conjectures. In conjecture one, he says the fraction of fields less than or equal to, with discriminant less than or equal to B, as B goes to infinity, has a limiting probability of being ramified. That, let me just say this probability, he gives an explicit formula, but I will call it rho sub n star of p. And rho sub n star of p has an explicit formula that's a rational function. It's a rational function of p. I won't give it explicitly, but the way it behaves is, is that rho n of p is roughly 1 over p plus an error on the order of 1 over p squared as p goes to infinity. It's an explicit formula involving these powers of p in the partition function of various sorts. That's and conjecture two is that if you condition on on the field on, on this Sn number field being unramified at p. That is, P does not divide the discriminant of the field F. Then there's a limit, uh, there's a limit probability for all splitting types. For all splitting types. So we're, we're now going to take P. We're now going to take P over OK, and we are going to factor it into its PI. I, 
I equals 1 at a pi degree, pi is fi. So the data describing this will be, so this data is described by a partition. So this is lambda is f1, f2 up to fc. It's, it's described by a partition of n. So partitions of n now correspond to conjugacy classes in, in this metric group. And this, this, limit prob this limit of distribution is the Chebotarov distribution. That's this projection. The Chebotarov distribution, which is the uniform distribution on Fn. But it means. Hmm? To, to be unramified? The, this is the conjecture, the first conjecture. The conjecture. Be no, no Well, un unramified in the sense that this probability is 1 minus 1 over p. It's going, yeah. it's for p large, this is, as, as, as p goes to infinity, you get 1 minus, you get approximately 1 minus 1 over p is unramified, okay. and 1 over p is ramified, approximately. In the earlier result here, it's exact. In this result, it's approximate because it's, okay. Let me say about these conjectures is that Bargava proves them he proves them for n less than or equal to phi, using the machinery he developed for quartic and cubic degree four and five, which was part of his new innovation. And uh, the earlier degree three or less, I think, can be extracted from. Okay, let me say, I'm sure he proved conjecture two. I, I don't see how he could do it without. All right. Well, these, this is uh, these are beautiful, deep, deep results. But what what it suggested was that we why don't we return to our naive model here and repeat a, a probabilistic construction that's in, in as close an analogy to the Bargava construction as possible, because in this situation you can prove everything. So let me say the punchline before I get, get this, before I write down the model, is that you can, you can, because you see in this, in this naive model, we get SN extensions with probability one. So it's, we can, polynomial splitting model. So let me show you a connection. So here is the model. We pick random polynomials in a box. So that's all the ai are less than or equal to b integer coefficients. We're eventually going to take send B to infinity. Uniform distribution. <coughs> and we're going to ask what, what fraction of polynomials in the box Well, first, they're they are, are irreducible with Galois group Sn. Right. 
of the splitting field. Well, we already know it's almost all the polynomial is in the box. So that didn't do anything. Okay. The second thing we want is we want un unramified in the sense in the sense that P does not divide the determinants of F. So our, mo our model, our polynomials here are integer polynomials. And they have a given splitting type, lambda equals F1, F2, up, up to Fk, which is f of x will be congruent to the product of fi of x in mod p. So that will be the factorization in fp of x. In this case, v, v mod pv of x. Okay. i equals 1 to k. And here the factorization is square free. The factorization is square free because the condition of P not dividing the discriminant will say no repeated root modulo P, which will force it to be square free. It's if and only if. Um. Okay, this is analogous, this is exactly analogous because of the, the well known criterion. I mean, I learned algebraic number theory from Lang, so this is in Lang. Page 27, if you have whatever it is on line, it may have been 20, page 27 in one of the many editions of the book. Okay. Um, um, is that if, if you take f of x and g of x, monic and irreducible. I'm giving a very watered down version of the proposition since he wants it to apply to all in integrally closed things. Um, it's, it's a local condition, but it will say basically that the factorization of f of x modulo p will exactly give you the splitting of the, of the prime ideals above p in the, in the extension got by adjoining one root of the polynomial. If f of x is monic irreducible and we set f to be q of theta adjoin one root, And if P does not divide the discriminant of f of x, then f of x congruent to f i of x mod P i square free, then, I mean, it's even more precise than P p times the ring of integers of f will be, will factor exactly as, as the pi with having degree equal to the degree of the fi. Having degree equal to the degree of f, fi. I give up on that piece of chalk. And as I recall, it's As I recall precisely, I'm not going to write it down. Pi is actually given as the ideal generated by P and F. Fi? No, it should be P, right? Okay, so therefore, this splitting data here will exactly correspond to the splitting data in our Fn number field, which, which, which is matches bar gava. And this condition here on the Unramified is substituting for Bargava's unramified condition. So this, by the way, so we, there's 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 one difference, which is that the discriminant of f of x is equal to the discriminant of the order generated by one root of the polynomial. So this is an order contained in O K because I have monic polynomial, and therefore it will be equal to the discriminant of the, it will be the discriminant of f times some constant 
m squared, which will be the index of this order in will be the index of this order in OK. So the discriminant of the polynomial will guarantee unramified in the field, but the reverse might not be true. You might have some unram... OK. Anyway, the answer is that... So if you like... The answer will be a theorem which says... A limiting splitting distribution exists as t goes to infinity. As the box size b goes to infinity. And this limiting distribution then will be nu of n t lambda. So lambda will be the partition. This will be the partition of n describing the splitting. T will be the prime, and N will be redundant. N is redundant because N is the size of the, is the sum of the elements in the partition. But for various reasons, I want to remind you of the N that's involved here. Um, no, B is running to infinity. We're taking a limit as B. Okay. P, P is fixed, yes, P is fixed. So this is the analog of the Bargava conjecture which said limit exists. Uh, condition on unramified. So I would say, the other thing I would say is that un unramified occurs with probability exactly, exactly 1 minus 1 over P. And this part is exactly the same as in the part in, in the original paper of Weiss. The structure is all inherited from the finite field. When we did the conditioning on being unramified, we were reduced to square-free factorization. So in, in OK, so this is the punchline is this distribution depends on P. So this statement would be the sort of the parallel analog for the Bargava problem in this simple model. Okay? But the answer is different. The answer the answer is different. That is that is a surprise. Yes, the fraction that we're well um, on honesty compels me to. <laughs> I, I would like to say that the, the, the size of the errors that occur is bigger than what can be explained by the difference. Okay? And they. Other thing I should add, it will turn out that as p goes to infinity, the distribution goes nu, nu of n, n, n t lambda goes to the Chebotar distribution. Aha. But we have a distribution that varies with p. So the final part of this talk will let we'll take p to one. Well, let's see what happens when we go to take p equals 1. Okay, but now... Okay, but now I want to describe the splitting distribution. So it... It is inherited from Ft. Okay, so it, it will. 
it will reduce to analyzing all the square free polynomial mod p. Square free monic polynomial of degree n in fp of x. So let's recall, so let's recall that what is the number of irreducible polynomials in fp of x? So irreducible polynomials monic degree n in fp of x. By the way, everything works for general finite fields, but since I was doing it over p over the integers, I'm only going to see fp and not the and not the fq for the Okay, so this formula is well known. Monic degree n, it is 1 over n times the summation of x to the n over d for d dividing n times mu of d. Right? This is the Mobius function. So actually the theory of finite fields was worked out in Gauss's distribution on his Ferris Metatron. But it was omitted for it was omitted from the original edition for reasons of space. And then it was the remaining sections were discovered in his in his posthumous works and they were included in the German edition of Districhiani published in the late 19th century. So Certainly, he had this formula before 1800. Ah, but I have said it wrong. It's p to the n. Yes, thank you. Mu, mu of d, p to the n over d. Okay. That's because I want to notice that these, these values are interpolated by a polynomial. And this, this polynomial was named by Metropolis and Rota. Professor Cartier already mentioned Metropolis and Rota in his abstract. There's a, so he called this the necklace polynomial because uh, there's a combinatorial inter and that polynomial will be right, we just replace M mn of x will just be, let's make mu, mu of d x to the n over d. But now when you plug in, instead of the integer x being a prime or a prime power, which will correspond to the finite fields, you can plug in any integer and you will get an integer out. This is, this is an integer valued polynomial. Plug in an integer, you get an integer out, even though it's got rational coefficients. So it's going to start out one, 1 over n, x to the n plus the lower order term. Okay, so now we want to count the number, we want to count the number of polynomials with a given factorization. Given factorization lambda. And so maybe I use lambda 1 greater than lambda 2 greater than lambda r. Some of the lambda i is n. I'm going to introduce a cycle polynomial, which will a cycle polynomial, which will count this, and this will be n, n sub lambda of x, and it will be equal to the product over the degrees from j equals one to n of some binomial coefficients. So the binomial coefficients insert the necklace polynomial in here of degree j, and then we need the cycle structure. Cj of lambda, which is the number, which is the number of parts of the partition lambda of psi equal to j. Now that is one strange looking thing. Okay, so here m, m sub j of x over k will be equal to just what you would think, lower lower factorial. equal to that, or it'll be equal to 1 if k is 0. So let me observe, this, th 
This, as I've defined it, is now a polynomial in Q of X. Okay. Yeah? Yes, that's a very good point. And also these polynomials show up in a paper of wit in the 1930s, but not the wit vector paper, a paper on free Lie algebra. Yes, well that, yes, one should pay attention to that because when I show you this numerology for this F, F1 thing, maybe you will be able to tell me what it is. Right. Okay, so I have to erase more. So what is the bottom line? Ah. You know I never did this before. There's a story about Erdrich when he went to Cambridge in the 1930s at the age of 21. He said, Yes, you know, I went to the I went to the common room, you know, for tea, and I and I actually had to butter a slice of bread, and you know, it it wasn't so hard. All right, we're going to get to. Now I can define a z-splitting distribution. The z-splitting distribution on the symmetric group Fn with z a complex number. So this distribution will be mu. The distribution I'm going to describe will be constant on conjugate subclasses. So I'm simply going to define its value on a constant. So everything that appears in this talk is a class function on the symmetric group. So it'll be nu, nu of n z comma lambda will be equal to 1 over z to the n minus 1 times z minus 1 times this cycle polynomial. j equals 1 to n of m, m sub j z z sub j lambda. Okay, and then the theorem is from earlier is that when when z is a prime p, so z is real, this this distribution is non-negative probability distribution. So it'll be a probability distribution on Fn. So by probability distribution, I mean its total mass is one, and it will be non-negative. But I've, but I've now stuck in a complex parameter, so in general, I will get a complex valued measure if I did this thing. It will retain the property that the sum of everything adds up to 1, which is to say all these rational functions on this side will add up to 1 as a rational function when I sum over all the functions. That's something you get, you get, you get for free. And as I said, this is non-constant. This is non-constant in Z as is clear by inspection. And let me say, the, these things are polynomial. So the only denominators I can get are I can have a singularity at 0, and I can have a singularity at 1. Uh, so, so let me say that as Z goes to infinity, you go, as Z goes to infinity, you go to the uniform distribution. These are rational functions, so they are defined at infinity. And at infinity, they are all a constant. And the reason that's true is because the degree of this product is n, and the numerator is n. So as I run to infinity, only the top degree term of this thing is going to matter. And if you expand the top degree term of this thing, you will find you get exactly the formula for the number of elements of the conscious subject. OK, so let's, 
Recall that the size of the conjugacy class C lambda is equal to n factorial over the product of C, C j of lambda j equals 1 to n, and C j, j is it this, this, what is it? J to the CJ of lambda, is that what it is? Okay. Whatever, well, that should, that should come out of this. If it's done right, you can sort of see it. Okay, so now to, to summarize that part, the motivating, this is it. So the mystery number one is, is explain geometrically why this model makes these, this this model this probability model makes different predictions than dif has different limits than Bargava. Okay. As C goes to infinity. Well, well, we proved it. The models are not identical, but it, it, somehow all the pieces that went into them are very similar, and it isn't clear geometrically what is accounting for the difference. You, you might think it has to do with the fact that the discriminants differ in the two case by this factor with the, uh, with the, the fact that polynomials can only generate rings that are monogenic, have one generator, and that not all the rings of integers in number fields have that property. And that presumably it has something to do with that. Geometrically, how you see the limit is different, I, d I don't know. Um. Okay, so now let me. There are various properties of these splitting measures, so. Okay, I'm going to consider Z on the real axis. One is less than z is less than infinity. So maybe I should call zx to do this. Then you can prove, you can show the following. I, I don't have time to do the, to do the rest of it. But it, for z on the real axis, it is non-negative at all integers, at all integers n greater than or equal to 2. So it's a probability distribution. And you can prove it's non-negative for all reals x greater than n minus 1. So it's a probability distribution. But for 2, 3, n, n minus 1, the distribution vanishes someplace. Distribution has has zeros, and in particular, in particular, this distribution mu n p corresponding to the trivial partition, which is complete splitting, equals zero when p is less than or equal to n minus one. So the simplest case you can see is if you have a cubic polynomial over z mod over f2, then, then it cannot split completely because it would then have three roots, but there are only two elements in the finite field of order two, so there would have to be a multiple root, and it would be excluded by this discriminant condition. And this example was noted, noted by Dedekind in 1878 because he observed that you can't get an f you can't get an f3 extension in which two splits completely, which, which would imply that two does not divide, it's unramified and splits completely, that two does not divide the discriminant of k, but two will divide the discriminant of any polynomial that generates this field. Because when reduced modulo two, the discriminant, and that will produce an extra factor in the discriminant of all polynomials for that field of p, which means, and this is one of the differences with the, with the Bargava model. And as I said, the sum of the rational functions is one. So now I want to come to the case of one. I, 
I would like to say one more thing having to do with the F1. I, I, I will use F1 in the sense of in the, the sense of interpolation from counting points on FP. So I could take V, v to be a variety defined over Fp. And my, my variety here is actually is actually the affine variety A n minus 1 minus the discriminant locus. The discriminant of F equals 0 in my field. And The observation is the, the number of points in V of Fp is, is interpolatable by a rational function. By a rational function in this variable Z equals P. And this number of points here is, is exactly p to the n minus p to the n minus 1, which equals phi of p to the n, which is the Euler quotient function. And this is the reason why I got this probability exactly 1 minus 1, one, one, minus one over p. So since this is a conference on number theory, I'm allowed to use the Mobius function of the Euler quotient function. Okay, and this is my this is my rational function R of P, and here, so in this talk we have two difference. We have a refined rational function that counts the number the number of points with splitting mod p exactly lambda, this, this partition. Okay? And that was also a rational function of this interpolating variable z. That's that's the z to the n minus one z minus one is this this is right here, uh, okay. But then the extra thing is the conditioning on being unramified. Okay, remember the number of points in a n is exactly p to the n. Right, I, I, I'm using monic polynomial. It's just p to the n points and a to the n the affine space over n p. So we've conditioned on being unramified, which which changed p to the n to p to the n times one minus one over p. Okay, so these are the there are two differences. Now let me say about this first difference. Uh, I mean there are. As I've been told, we can, t we can take local systems over a n, and we can use the Rosenbeek left set fixed point formula, I'm putting in representations of the group S n, mapping in representations of the group S n. And by that, we can, count, we can count points on here weighted by the representations. And then we can unwind by the usual, uh, by the usual formulas and representation theory that says we span all the class functions, we could unwind and get some linear combination that would actually that would actually extract these statistics. So these statistics could be extracted by Grossendieck left sets if you wanted. 
but I just counted them in an elementary way straightforwardly. Um, this, this second condition is the, so this is the interesting new twist here. Because right? now we notice, we notice that as p goes to 1, 1 minus 1 over p goes to 0. So we are going to study the ghost of a departed quantity when we take this limit. The, depart, the departed fraction we actually study. Okay, so here's what we get. So what happens, what happens at z equals 1? Oh, no. This, and this is the whole point of this talk, is to get these crazy formulas. Okay. Okay, certainly the measure, so I will now, the measure nu n1 exists, and it is a sine measure. It's supported on, it's supported on, on a small set of the partitions. It's supported on the partitions that are either a square, so this is AB equals N, a square A by C, that's one, or it's supported on partitions that are of the form CD with a single extra box added, so this is CD equals N minus one. So those, those conjugacy classes in the symmetric group have an interpretation. Those are the Springer regular elements in the, conjug in the, in the group Sn, if, if I knew what that was. Okay, but we can give the, we can give a proposition that gives the exact formula. So Vn of lambda splits into two pieces. It splits into a piece Wn of lambda and hmm? Vn1 will split into Wn of lambda. This will be lambda that are of this form. And then Wn star, n minus 1 star of lambda prime 1. So these, are the, these are the lambda that are the form Cd with an extra box. I guess the box should have been down here in English notation. And this, and Wn minus, so there's an amazing thing, which is Wn minus 1 star of lambda star 1 is exactly equal to Wn minus 1 of lambda star. So it's inherited directly from the symmetric group on one fewer element. And W of n of lambda we can write down completely explicitly. It's equal to negative 1 to the a plus 1 times C of B over n if the partition is C A. And it's equal to 0 otherwise. Now this has a very interesting feature because this, this thing, because both of these functions are multiplicative functions, you will actually get, so the second thing implies that Wn of b to the a factors over the prime powers, over the primes dividing n into W of p to the a, and then it just extracts the primes inside each piece, p to the b, p to the c. p to the b divides, exactly divides c, p to the a exactly divides a. And when you do this factorization, when you do this factorization, the sign is inherited entirely from the prime C. This is a negative 1 to the A plus 1. So this, this will be even for all the odd primes, so it doesn't do anything. So the prime 2 contributes the sign. Okay, but now I want to come to the, since I run out of time, I want to. So the question is, does this have a representation theory interpretation?
First of all, this is a probability measure defined in conjugacy classes. A priori, it doesn't have to do with the representation theory. It's on the conjugacy class side. But we can ask, are these things the character of some representation? Of course, they would be a rational character. So in order to get an integer character, we would like to scale. So the proper scale is to scale by multiplying by the factorial. I will look at omega m n factorial times omega. So I want to say what's going to happen. It will turn out one of these things is when, prop, when scaled by n factorial is going to be a genuine character of a reducible representation. And the other one is going to be the negative of a genuine character of a reducible representation. The, the even ends are negative and the odd ends are genuine representations. And we can write it down explicitly. It, it is is the character for odd n. It is the character of the induced representation this is odd n equals 2m plus 1 of the induced representation from the cyclic subgroup to Sn of the trivial character. Okay, and for even n equals 2n minus n factorial omega m n is the induced representation in Cn of Sn of the sign character. And this operation in going from this thing to that thing, the equality here is, and finally, minus n factorial times omega star of n lambda is equal to the induced representation from Sn minus 1 to Sn of the induced representation of Cn minus 1 to Sn minus 1 of Okay, of course the induction commutes, so I could combine this into, into a single induced representation. Um, okay, I, this is one of those things. I said I had no reason to believe these things were actually characters of representation, so I actually computed them for the, up to S6. And I observed that I, they were decomposing beautifully into, into irreducible representations with small integer coefficients. Sometimes with sign. And after that, then I decided there had to be a representation theoretic explanation. So I actually went and looked from one. And of course, the induced from the cyclic from the cyclic subgroup up is going to produce something that's supported on rectangular partitions. So that was the first thing that captured that work. Okay. But I would like to conclude with a I'd like to conclude with a numerical example so that you can understand some of this crazy stuff. So I'm going to look at S3. Okay, and now I have three conjugacy classes. I have the trivial conjugacy class of size 1. I have the conjugacy class 2, 1, which is of size 3. And I have the conjugacy class for a cyclic thing, which is of size 2. Okay, so at z equals infinity, that's the Chebotarov thing. That will give me a sixth, a half, a third. Okay, this is Chebotarov. It's just C over G. Okay. You're going to talk, talk, no. Okay, and then we have Z equals 2. So Z equals 2 is the Dedekind example. This is 0, this is a half, and this is a half. And then finally at Z equals 1, which is this new infinity, I get minus a sixth. I get one half and two thirds. And this thing is made of up of W3. Of, it's got two pieces. It's got these pieces W3 and W3 star lambda. And what are they? They are one third, zero, two thirds, and minus a half, plus a half, and zero. So observe, uh, this, this 2, 1 is not a rectangular partition. 
but it is a partition with an extra one. So that's why it's appearing, contributing down here. And this, this thing is inherited from omega 2, so I was denoting this as omega 2 star, that's inherited from omega 2x, which is minus a half, a half on S2. I have the I have the the character decomposition also but this is the so what I find when I when I put this at s equals one you see is there's it's it's not so complicated but there's a surprising amount of extra structure there which is definitely representation theoretic so something is definitely going on and the mystery is therefore this is the end. The mystery, too, is explain this geometrically in terms, this geometrically in terms of, in, in, in terms of F1 or some other way. <laughs> I mean, this, this is, this is data, but I, I think it, I think it's, I think it might actually turn out to have a, a, a meaning within the sort of developing theory of F1. And that's why I came here to give this talk. Thank you. This, this, the, no, but these things add up to one, and they are fractionals. They won't give you they won't give you integer character. The trivial character already gives you one in, at every group element, so the group trivial character has to sum up to n factorial. So I have to. So n factorial is the minimal thing I could multiply by because because these guys actually have the trivial character. Okay. The other thing is carrot thing is this is this is a positive, this is a positive representation and this is a negative representation. So we so we it's a virtual character that splits into two pieces. That setting z equals one corresponds to count, counting points on f one. So, so that's always the reference. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, because I took this one minus one over p. No, this is a tangent thing. Maybe it's a tangent thing. I don't know. <laughs>